Hello friends and bookmakers, let's talk about making a book in Adobe Lightroom. But before we go any further, there's two things I would like to say. One, if you're a photographer like me and you spend a lot of time in Lightroom, this is a wonderful program because it is incredibly efficient. It's a very easy way to get into bookmaking because most of us are spending a lot of time in the program and the book module is right there. The second thing I want to talk about is that I'm a firm believer that the best way to view photography is in print form, whether that's an pr individual print or a book. And Lightroom is a great way to get started. So let's talk about getting started. The first thing you're going to want to do if you're going to make a book in Lightroom is to find the images you want to use in the book. Now I've pre-selected a folder of images here, but you'll notice that some of these are starred and some of them aren't. Now, I use the star system to quickly highlight the images that I want to use in a book. And there's a lot of ways of doing it, but this is how I do it. And you'll notice if you haven't done the stars before, uh, it's very simple. You select an image, and then all you have to do to, to put a one star in an image is to hit the one key. If you think an image is better and you want two stars, you hit the two key, etc., etc. If you've made a mistake, you can always go back and hit zero, and it will erase those stars. So what I do is I go up to Attribute, I hit one star, and this shows me all the images that I've starred that I want to use in the book. So I'm going to select all these. And then if you look at the top, the fourth module over is the book module. And if I click on this, this brings up what I would call the command center of how you're going to create your book. Now, let me just say this. If you've used Lightroom before, this is going to look very familiar and you're going to take to it very quickly. If you've never used Lightroom, never seen this before, don't worry. That's totally fine. All it's going to take is a couple of test drives and a little bit of practice to get this down. Nothing here is overly complicated. It just takes a few tries. So we're going to start on this right-hand column. Now this column, as you can see, is pretty vast. It's pretty deep. There's no way we can cover all of this today. I'm just going to cover a little bit and cover a couple of things that I, help, I think will help you get jump-started on your book. We are going to start up here in the upper right with book settings. This is going to ask you for a basic set of ingredients of what it is you want to make, starting with what is it you want to make, a photo book, a magazine, a trade book, etc. For the sake of the test, I'm going to leave it on photo book. It's also going to ask you what size book you want to make, and for the sake of the test, I'll just leave it where it's at, 10 by 8. It's also going to ask me what kind of cover type I want. I love hardcover image wrap, so I'll leave it there. It's also going to ask me what kind of paper I want to use, and I think I'm just going to go standard for the sake of the test. Now, here's something I want to clarify. This says logo page, and it's currently marked to none. If I click on this drop-down menu, you're going to see two choices, on and none. If I leave this on, it means that the blurb logo will be printed in the back of the book. So if that's fine, and I often leave the blurb logo in there, it's also, you'll notice, if you leave the blurb logo on, you get a discounted price on the book. But for whatever reason, if you don't want that logo or you can't have that logo, you can hit none, and it will remove that logo. I just wanted to make sure you were clear on that. Now, this is something, a feature that I think is a really smart part of the program, which is an estimated price. So if I change my ingredients up here, if I go from hardcover image wrap to soft cover, I will see that price change reflected in real time. And that's a great thing, if you're, especially if you're on a budget. Okay, so let's move down. The next section in the menu is the auto layout. Now, there's, there's two schools of thought about auto layout. If you're an accomplished bookmaker, an experienced bookmaker, or you've made a lot of books in Lightroom, you might not need this auto layout. But for everyone else, auto layout is a really good way to get a jump start on your book. It's not, it may not be perfect off the bat, but it's going to be a great way to get all of your work into a book quickly, and then you can start making changes after the fact. So I use this quite a bit. And what you'll see here is un underneath the auto layout, you're going to see a preset button. And if I click on the preset button and I go down to edit auto layout presets, this brings up this menu, this, this uh, pop-up window that allows me to choose here my right pages and my left pages. Right now I have it as a fixed layout on the right-hand page and a blank left-hand page. Just a very simple classic outline. I can also add, click these buttons down below to add text photos or add photo text if I want to. I can zoom photos to fit or fill to my liking. I can make these pages look however I want. I can do one photo up, two photo, three, four, whatever I want. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to hit done. And then watch what happens when I hit auto layout. I hit this and literally within a half a second, all of those images I had in that gallery have now come into the book, a single image on the right-hand page, and a blank left-hand page. It was that fast. Now, again, 
all of this I can change. All I did was use the auto layout to get a jump start to get my work in quickly. Now I can make changes and do whatever I want. So to continue on down here, and again, we don't have time to go through all of these, but a lot of these address basic questions that I hear about books all the time. Can I do page numbers? Yes. All you've got to do is click here and then you can add them wherever you want. You can also check things like where your photo cells are, your text safe areas, your page bleed. You can see where things are going to bleed on and off the page. You can also control your padding, which means your borders. So if you need a specific kind of border or thickness, et cetera, you can control it here. Your border, uh, you can also control the colors of your borders. All of this stuff goes on and on and on. So again, one of the great aspects of this program is you, can, you have so many choices. You can really fine tune whatever it is you want to do. Now, when you're finished with this and it's absolutely perfect and you know that it's going to shine and it's going to sing, you can then go down here to this button where it says send book to blurb. You click this button. It brings up a menu that says title this, subtitle this, uh, tell us who the author is, and you hit upload that book. It also reminds you of the cost of what it is that you're uploading. And again, I think that's really smart because a lot of us are on a budget or you're working for a client that's on a budget and you need to keep those things in control. So that, in a nutshell, is how you get started with making a book in Lightroom. Good luck and happy bookmaking.